It is a name that Americans are hearing more and more. Monsanto, an agriculture company that has become synonymous with the term GMOs. So what is Monsanto? What exactly are GMOs? And why are so many people up in arms about a company that grows food? The first step toward truth is to inform. If the name Monsanto is not familiar to you, let's get you caught up. According to Monsanto's website, Monsanto is a sustainable agriculture company. We deliver agricultural products that support farmers all around the world. We are focused on empowering farmers, large and small, to produce more from their land while conserving more of our world's natural resources, such as water and energy. We do this with our leading seed brands in crops like corn, cotton, oil seeds, and fruits and vegetables. Well, sounds pretty good. In short, Monsanto is a company that, among other things, produces the herbicide Roundup. But the controversy surrounding Monsanto begins with their development of genetically modified seeds, or GMOs, that are called Roundup Ready. Roundup Ready crops are reportedly more resistant to weed killer and insects. According to Natural News, a growing body of evidence does connect GMOs with health problems, environmental damage, and violation of farmers' and consumers' rights. Concerns like those have pushed millions worldwide into the streets to protest Monsanto and their GMOs. In May of 2013, two million people in over 50 countries expressed outrage over a number of issues surrounding Monsanto. Okay, so the first concern, the safety of those GMOs. But there is more. While there is growing concern over the safety of GMOs, the United States, for all the requirements placed on the food industry, requires no GMO food labeling. Whether you agree or disagree on whether or not GMOs are dangerous, 64 other countries require GMO labeling. Again, the United States does not. Could it be that most Americans just don't care? Well, actually, no. Despite the lack of political will on this issue, a poll conducted earlier this year by the New York Times found that three quarters of Americans are concerned about the number of genetically modified or engineered foods. What's more, a staggering 93% support mandatory labeling of GMO foods. So to recap, first there is the concern over GMOs. Second is the concerns over labeling. And third, there is the issue of Monsanto holding a patent on all of its seeds. Monsanto explains on their website the need for patents, saying, Monsanto patents many of the seed varieties that we develop. Patents are necessary to ensure that we are paid for our products and for all the investments we put into developing these products. This is one of the basic reasons for patents. You see, when a farmer purchases these genetically modified seeds from Monsanto, they sign a licensing agreement promising to use all the seed and to not use any regenerated seed for future crops. So to recap the issues with Monsanto, questions about the safety of GMOs. They're certainly out there, though we should be clear, there are those who argue that GMOs are perfectly safe. They have no issues with consuming them. There are questions about labeling. Regardless of whether GMOs are good or bad, shouldn't the public have the right to know what they're putting in their bodies and have the right to either consume or walk away? And questions about the ability of a corporation to be able to patent seeds, preventing farmers from replanting crops without paying a fee or attempting to gain a patent over natural vegetables. So what you need to know is that all those questions may actually be secondary to this one is the biggest problem with a company like Monsanto its relationship with government. In the early 1990s, the FDA took a look at these genetically modified foods. There were a lot of concerns, including tests that showed rats were developing stomach lesions from the genetically modified tomatoes that they were fed. According to Jeffrey Smith, in memo after memo, these experts describe toxins, new diseases, nutritional deficiencies, and hard to detect allergens. So what changed? In 1994, the USDA's Food Safety Inspection Service hired a new administrator, Mike Taylor. Taylor had worked for the FDA in the 1970s, and then in the 1980s, he became a private sector lawyer for a firm that represented Monsanto. In 1994, Taylor takes over the FSIS and remains in that post until 1996. 1996, GMO foods begin showing up on the plates of Americans' homes. 
After 1996, Mike Taylor goes back into the private sector and this time goes to work for Monsanto itself. For the next 16 months, he works directly for the company. In 2009, he returns to the public sector, now leading the food side of the FDA. In fairness, Mike Taylor says he is not Monsanto's man. That claims that he has bought and paid for could not be further from the truth. In fairness, I don't know if that's true or not. What I do know is that regardless of whether or not it's true, the revolving door of government and private sector and the big advantages that big corporations have in the system is undeniable. Monsanto's influence over food supply is troubling. Their ability to seemingly prevent GMO labeling, also troubling. Their connections with people like Mike Taylor, who have the ability to control what does and does not show up on our family's tables, whether nefarious or not, certainly smells like crony capitalism. And that is a reality check. Well, now that you've been informed, it's time to get engaged. Go right now to binswan.com. There you're going to find the story where you can view it again, as well as the text of the story and the sources that we have used. Also, if you would like to help us create more episodes just like this one, you can do so by clicking on the Contribute tab on the right-hand side of the screen. Binswan.com. Get engaged right now.